What's up you guys? Today I want to talk about astral projection, also known as out-of-body experiences. Give a brief idea of what it is and how you can experience it, possibly even today, if that's something that you want to do. I know that I've already made several videos on astral projection based on what a lot of people would probably ask about it, such as what's the purpose of doing it? Is it dangerous or demonic? What about sleep paralysis, etc.? So check those out because I'm not going to repeat them here. Okay, so what exactly is astral projection or an out of body experience? Well, it depends. It depends who you're talking to because it's such an interesting phenomenon that people, depending on their background, or experience explain it in different ways so some say it's when your spirit or the real you comes out and leaves your physical body especially because of the sensations that you feel when it's happening it seems to suggest that there's some sort of separation going on but for the sake of simplicity an out-of-body experience or astral projection is when you perceive your awareness outside your physical body and being fully conscious though like how you're fully awake right now watching this video and for the most part, you're able to go through solid objects, travel to distant locations, including other dimensions. Not to say that that stuff can happen here, but that's for another video. And keep in mind, folks, especially to those who think that this stuff is bad and dangerous, the thing is, we all go out of body all the time. Pretty much every night or whenever we go to sleep, we just don't remember it. That's why I wouldn't be too quick to judge it as a bad thing. You know what I'm saying? And other than it being associated with sleep, I mean, OBEs also happen during traumatic or extreme events like accidents or when people are sick and dying. But to have one that's self-induced, one that you can plan and control, now that's something that you got to learn. And I remember back in the day, whenever I'd hear about these amazing and transformative near-death experiences, you know, that people would have, I'd be like, dude. I want to experience those things too, just not the near death part. <laughs> then when I finally learned how, and as I mentioned in my other videos, I started having them regularly, several times a month, a few times a week, and even several times in one day. You know, I just don't share them all online. And they've definitely been eye-opening. And it seems like 3D language just can't fully express what's experienced in these higher planes of reality, these higher dimensions for real. And just a heads up, you know, can everyone have a fully conscious out of body experience? Yes, absolutely. But the question is should everyone try to have an out of body experience? And in my opinion, no. It depends. It depends on a person's state of mind. Remember, in the astral, things are a lot more thought responsive, meaning that whatever you're thinking, it manifests right away. It's like law of attraction at super high speed. In other words, if you're struggling with a lot of fears, or depression and anxiety, I seriously wouldn't recommend doing it, dude, because what'll happen is that you'll start manifesting things that are on the same frequency. That said, if overall you're a happy and let's say decent person, I wouldn't be too worried about it. Seriously, in fact, I'd highly recommend having them for the reasons that I shared in another video talking about the benefits of exploring this multidimensional universe which will give you a greater awareness of who you are. Now, to get straight into it, how do you get out of body? How do you astral project? Well, there are a bunch of different ways to go about it. Trust me, there's not just one right way to do it, but I'd recommend the technique that best suits you. For example, if you're good at visualizing things, okay, then stick with those kind of methods. Or if you're more of the listening type, then try listening to a meditation, or binaural beats, or whatever, or a combination of them. It really doesn't matter. Remember, whatever works best for you, and you'll eventually discover that over time, as long as you're willing to devote the time and effort to making it happen. And later, I'm gonna share with you a technique that worked really well for me when I first started, and it still works for me. And as for you, the way to approach this is that you really got to be committed and determined to do it. If it doesn't happen the first time, okay, don't even trip, dude. Just do it again. It takes practice because if you have the will to not give up, then trust me, it'll eventually happen and you'll be glad that you didn't stop trying. As for the best time to do it, there's something called the hypnagogic state. And it's a transitional state that we all pass through every day 
briefly whenever we go to sleep and whenever we wake up. It's the in-between state, the dreamlike state, where we're half asleep and half awake. And this is a good springboard for out-of-body experiences because it's very similar to deep hypnosis, right? Which means it's easier to program yourselves to get out of body during this small window, unlike the times when you're fully awake and not easily suggestible. And so there are several stages that usually occur, not always, at least consciously to us, when going out of body. And I'll mention them just in case it happened to you so you don't freak out. So you'll understand that it's normal. But as you relax your body, you might start to feel certain sensations like heaviness, lightness, vertigo, numbness. And then you might experience something called sleep paralysis where you won't be able to move or talk. And I've had this and I know a lot of people who've had this. And unfortunately, because of their religious or fear-based beliefs, they tend to interpret this experience in such a negative way, dude. And there's no need to do that, folks. It's normal. It's normal. Think about it. If your body wasn't paralyzed during sleep, then you'd be flailing and thrashing your arms around while you're dreaming, right? Acting them out and possibly hurting yourself or those around you. You know what I'm saying? And I did an entire video on sleep paralysis, so you can go check that out on my channel. And another thing that you might experience is something commonly known as the vibrational stage. And I've experienced this many, many times, especially in the beginning, but not so much now, to be honest. But basically, you'll start feeling these energy vibrations and tingling throughout your body that could be mild or really intense. It varies. And you could hear buzzing and humming, roaring sounds, or even wind. And for some of us, it felt like we were being electrocuted straight up, yet it didn't hurt, but it can be. Really uncomfortable though, I gotta admit. But once again, it's nothing to be afraid of. Just relax and try not to move your physical body at all. And then of course, there's a separation stage. And this can happen in a number of different ways. Your astral body can start to float and lift up out of your physical body. That's very common. You might roll out or just sit up or even have a sinking feeling where I remember falling through my bed <laughs> or times where certain parts of my astral body would pop out one at a time, like my arm or my leg, instead of my entire body all at once. But then again, I've also had many OBEs where there seemed to be no separation feeling at all. No transition where I'd just lie down, close my eyes, then boom. Immediately, all of a sudden, I'd be fully conscious in a new environment. So anything can happen. But once you're finally out, because staying out is a skill too. The key to prolonging and staying out of body is to always remain calm and to not think of your physical body at all in any way or else you'll snap right back into it. That's just what happens, dude. <laughs> and it's funny because so many people are worried that they might get stuck in the astral when in reality, it's the exact opposite. It's actually harder to stay out than it is to come back, especially because we supposedly have a silver cord attached from our astral body to our physical body. And so there's seriously no need to worry about not coming back, you guys, really. Now as for the technique, like I've said, use whatever method you think would work best for you based on how you're wired. As for me, I've tried so many different techniques in the beginning, but it just wasn't happening. And it wasn't until I stumbled upon William Buhlman's work, which I highly recommend, by the way, where I discovered a technique that worked so well and was so effective for me that I'd like to share it with you guys right now. And it's called the target technique. The target technique. And remember, it's best to do this when you're in a relaxed or better yet, the hypnagogic state, the state where you're half asleep and half awake, right? And so the technique basically goes like this. Pick a person, place, or object located some distance to you. Something or someone easy for you to visualize. And make sure it's something real and not imaginary. And also it helps if it has some special meaning for you where you're emotionally involved. And it can be your favorite chair, or a painting, or a sculpture, flowers, whatever. And for the next part, and you don't have to do this, but if the object is within range, in close proximity, examine every detail of it, right? Memorize the sight and texture, the smell, colors, weight, everything. But of course, if your target is far away, it can still work, because my target was outside of my home. And as long as you can remember all the sensations that you get related to it, 
So what happens when you're using this technique is that you'll be shifting your consciousness, your awareness away from your physical body to your target or targets, maintaining your attention on it for as long as possible until you drift off to sleep. And if you're persistent enough, the results can be dramatic. And I know mine was, and I remember ending up at the actual place I was visualizing and I was like, whoa, I'm actually here because my consciousness shifted to another location. And this method has worked like a charm for me for several years now. And like I've said, I still use it. And I hope it works for you too if this is something that you want to experience. Cool? Alrighty, guys. Hope this helps. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a like and a thumbs up. And of course, share it with others who you think might appreciate it. And if you end up trying this method and it works for you, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also the bell so you'll get notified of any new videos. And be sure to sign up for my free live training, my free masterclass on how the law of attraction really works. Just click the link in the description to register. Seats are limited. Like I always say, more is coming. Till next time, see you on the astral. I'm out. Peace. <music>